Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Then check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something to inspire you. That's dealtoheelteas.com. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to dealtoheelteas.com. Again, that's dealtoheelteas.com. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you enjoy the Girl Dad Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe the relationship between a daughter and her father is one of the most important relationships a young lady can have. And therefore, my mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by sharing the voices of girl dads to the world. So check out our podcast on every platform where podcasts can be listened to. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel. Again, that's the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with your host, Ernest James. Welcome to Heal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you haven't already, make sure that you guys listen, like, subscribe, and share to our podcast on all of our social media uh, listening platforms. Uh, make sure you guys go t- and check out our YouTube channel. We have revamped our YouTube channel. It is now the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network. Formerly, it was the Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast alone, but now it's the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network because now we have several podcasts that we are bringing to you guys on that channel. So make sure that you guys go to the Deal to Heal uh, uh, Podcasting Network on YouTube in order to watch our our uh, podcast. Also, make sure you guys check out our partner podcast, which is the Girl Dead Discussions Podcast, uh, because we believe that the relationship between a father and his daughter is one of the most important relationships in a young lady's life. So make sure you guys go check out uh, that podcast. Also, again, that's the Girl Dead Discussions Podcast. Also, our product of the week. As you guys know, we are a self-sustained podcast, and the way that we stay on the air is by bringing you amazing products for you to purchase. And so our product of the week is our purpose planner, as well as our purpose journal, because we believe that you need to journal in order to see where you've gone and where you are, but also plan for your future. So you can get your copies of our purpose journal and our purpose planner on Amazon. The links are below in the description. So make sure you guys go and check that out. But today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest, Mr. Rodney. How are you doing? I'm great. I am great, Ernest. How are you? I am good. I am good. First of all, let me say thank you for being here because you could have been doing anything else with anyone else, but you're here with me and my listeners, and we definitely appreciate it. So, we're going to jump right in, right? So I know we had a, a brief conversation before we got started, and you told me that you are a girl dad like myself. And so yeah. as usual, my first question, two questions, should I say, that I will ask you is, number one, what does it mean for you to be a girl dad? 
And number two, what is something that your daughter or daughters have taught you? Uh, what does it mean to be a girl dad? First and foremost, uh, I would have to say that there's no experience like it unless you go through it and embrace it. Um, you know, some people, unfortunately, they don't embrace it, but I embraced it. And it is a, a bond that is really, really unique when both of you embrace the, the love between the daughter and the father in that relationship. Uh, there's, a, there's a connection there in that your daughter is looking to you for direction. She's looking to you for feedback. She's looking to you um, from an insightful perspective on the type of man that she's looking to choose later on in life. And that's why I've always felt like it was critical that I exemplify certain aspects to my daughter and showed her certain things so that it would give her the best chance at choosing the most beneficial partner to her, right? And as far as the second part of your question, what have I learned from my daughter? It's simple, man. It is unconditional love. Because no matter how much we debate it, uh, when she got older, and they all go through that phase where they start to challenge you. Uh, my daughter is older. Uh, she's an adult now. Um, and they go through that phase uh, somewhere around the late teens. Um, could be the early teens. But mine happened around the late teens where they start to challenge you. They're coming into their adulthood. They want to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And I've always taken an approach like an attorney, right? I'm just here to give you advice. If, if, and it's fine, you don't have to take it, but just understand that if you don't, life will teach you. Yeah. So it's okay, right? And so I've always taken an approach that, you know, I'm your attorney. I've always been upfront and honest about everything with, with my daughter, but it's that unconditional love. So no matter how much we debated, no matter how much we disagreed, agreed to disagree uh, during that period and, you know, maybe some other periods, we've always come back together with this unconditional love. It's, it's a bond that sits there that, uh, you know, it cannot be broken. And that's what I think my daughter taught me most um, than anything. All right, all right. Love that answer, love that answer. To my listeners, if you guys love that answer, then you guys definitely have to tune in to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast where we have those uh, and more in-depth uh, discussions about our relationships with our daughter. So make sure you guys go and check that out. And hopefully in the future episode, we will have Mr. Ronnie on uh, and we can go deeper into that conversation because that's the whole conversation within itself, right? Raising yeah. our daughters. Uh, but it's definitely a conversation that I'm here for and that I love. And so, um, yeah, so I always ask those two questions to girl dads uh, when they come on this podcast. And so since we're here on the Deal to Heal podcast, do me a favor, introduce yourself to my audience and tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Well, um, I'm Rodney Lawson. I am the founder and principal owner of Rodney Lawson LLC. It is a management consulting firm uh, that I started about two years ago after spending uh, about 33, 34 years in the corporate world, 23 as an executive. And I just didn't like what I was seeing from a leadership perspective um, and how employees were being treated um, and just a lack of development, a leadership and management development that wasn't happening. Uh, so I started out and just, um, you know, took my own path and started my own company with it. And so that's, that's kind of what I do today. I love it. I love it. And, and that's one of the things that I, I love about this podcast because it allows me to meet people like myself who not only saw a problem or experienced a problem, but then took it upon themselves to say, you know what, I'm going to be the change agent for this problem, you know, for this situation, whatever it is. And so that's what, one of the things that I love about this podcast and being able to meet people like yourself to have those discussions, you know, because there are some similarities uh, usually between me and my guests that we do share, but then there's so much that is so different, you know, and so to be able to listen to other people's 
uh, accounts of, of their life and their experiences and their stories of overcoming is, is why I even started this podcast. Um, so I love to hear it. So let, let's go back. Um, I always say there was a story before the story, right? Before you, before we become the version of ourselves that we represent or we present to the world now, there was a version of ourselves who we were sometimes a whole different person, you know, and then that person goes through a, a experience that brings them into where they are now. And so let's just go back and, and to your story, Ronnie, if you will, you know, at the earliest uh, stages of, of who you were, um, and what was that initial situation or experience that kind of drove you to say, you know, even to go into the areas that you went into, but then not only that, but then to begin to bring change to those areas? Well, um, very good question. Um, early on, I um, grew up with, you know, my siblings and I, with a uh, father that was an alcoholic, um, very, very verbally abused, uh, violent personality, avid gambler. And that does something to you, right, in the household. And for me, because of what I saw and what I experienced, I wanted so bad to not be like my father. And because of that, it drove me to pursue a career um, with uh, no failure option in mind. I was, I was going to be successful no matter what. And it was all to prove to him, I, I wanted to live a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, so it drove me, it drove me to uh, pursue a career in the corporate world after you know playing sports in high school and early on in college. Uh, and it took me to a, a level where most people don't get to experience. And, and I'll explain this, and this isn't coming from an arrogant or a braggadocious uh, standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, but I started in the corporate world at a very early age. And by the age of 23, 24, I was already at a six figure salary. And this is in the early nineties. And, um, you know, so as far as my, my, my friends and, relatives and family members, you know, my income was, was, was much higher. And I was in like a, a, a certain, a different bracket. And this was, this was just with the high school diploma because I had uh, stopped going to college because I was pursuing my corporate career and there were opportunities to relocate to different areas. And so at the time I was at Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, and I left there and, and took a managed job in Memphis, Tennessee, um, so that I could, you know, pursue my corporate career. Um, but those, those pillars, right, those, those things that were within me, uh, you know, I look at what my father gave me uh, was something that I realized through therapy and that was that I am a rejection overcomer. Mm -hmm. And that is because my father, you know, he missed a lot of my football games. There were a lot of broken promises and a lot of, you know, uh, things that didn't happen that should have happened and you know and I was a pretty good football player you know coming up in high school I played in the Pennsylvania Ohio all-star game because uh, I grew up in that part of the country and um, you know it's something to hear other fathers from your teammates telling you you had a good game mm. you know but your father's not there you know um, or they're at the practices and they're like, man, you're, wild, you're really good, you know, but your father's not there to tell you that, you know, and it does something to you. And it did something to me um, that, you know, just made me not want to, to be that way, but it drove me, right? It gave me this drive. And so I can tell you, Ernest, that one experience in particular, when I first got into the corporate world, I uh, had the opportunity to work, uh, you know, in this, you know, Fortune 100 company, this telecom company, telecom giant, you know, back in the late 80s. And uh, I came out of training and in the very first interaction with my supervisor, you know, she asked us to write down a corporate, you know, goals, right? A long-term goal and a short-term goal. And my short-term goal was just to hit my sales plan. I was a new sales rep. 
in my long-term goal, I put down I wanted to be a vice president and I put the company in parentheses, whether it was that company or any other company. And she called me in on a one-on-one -on -one two days later. I'll never forget this experience. She said, why'd you choose that as your long-term goal? And I said, because I love this environment. I'm not in a physical environment. It's cool in the summer. It's warm in the winter. And I get to wear a shirt and tie. And she said, well, have you thought about anything else? I said, no. Finally, long story short, she got tired of asking me questions. And, you know, I'll never forget her face as I'm looking across the conference room table. And she said, Ron, you really might want to choose something that's more realistic. And I tell you, man, um, one of the things that I did get from my father is to fight, right? And all I could do, I, I just burned inside. I couldn't say what I wanted to say because I probably would have got the term. Yeah. <laughs> but what I did say to her, I said, listen, you asked me to write my goals down on that piece of paper, and that's exactly what I did. With all due respect, you do whatever as though you feel as though you need to do with that piece of paper, but you'll never, ever get me to change one single word on it. Can I finish my sales and go back to my desk? She said, sure. To this day, I don't know what she did with that piece of paper. I have, don't have a clue. But I do know this. I spent 14 years in that company. I was promoted 14 times. And when I left that company, I was international director over their international call center in Arlington, Virginia. I had 687 employees under my direction from over 50 different countries around the world. And I am the first director to lead that office to our coveted top center award for two consecutive quarters. Because all the other directors that worked there before talked about how difficult it was because of the different languages, right? And there was always dissension amongst the different cultures. And I go in there within four months, I took that office from near the bottom to the top. I share that story because I want the listeners to understand one thing. The person that's talking to you today is not the person that she was looking at. Mm -hmm. I talked with broken English. I talk with a lot of colloquialisms. I talk with a lot of broken uh, grammar. Um, I'm a product out of the hip hop culture, right? I only own one business suit, uh, maybe two ties, right? But I, I had to work on myself. And I knew that if, as long as I did two things, as long as I had a desire and a passion for growing and move forward, I would continue to develop myself and I would watch not just the supervisors above me, but I would watch the managers above them and say, okay, I'm gonna model myself behind them. That's the quickest way to become a supervisor, right? And I changed my professional tracks. I did things like, and this was tough to do, 15% of my gross paycheck every two weeks had to go to my, per, my professional wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Whether it was dry cleaning my shirts or buying a new shirt or getting a suit off layaway. And I would shop at places like Marshalls and TJ Maxx and I would get, you know, suits that were really, really inexpensive. But here's the key. I found a tailor that would tailor it to my body. And sometimes I would spend like $70 to get that suit tailored, but it would look like a thousand dollar suit, right? I would, um, you know, buy shoes or it, it had to go to my professional wardrobe. But those are just little things that I did because I knew that people were gonna judge me before I even opened my mouth. And I did not want to appear to be from a negative standpoint from that, you know, position. Um, right. So that was just one of the little things that I did, you know, and, and it's, it's one of the keys on why I moved so fast. Like I said, you know, in that, in that company, 14 years, I was promoted 14 times, you know, um, the 14th time I was promoted was after the 12th year. Cause I spent two years in that director level position before I left and went to go take a, a, a job offshore um, in Guyana, South America. So, um, yeah, I was fortunate enough with that because of my international experience. Uh, I got to work. Um, I had a company commute me from the Washington, D.C. area all the way to Guyana. And I did that for almost two years. Yeah. Beautiful experience um, to, to, to be able to do something like that. So, yeah. So it was my childhood, my father that had given me these, I guess, indirect skills that propelled me to be successful, right? But at the same time, I still harbored a lot of resentment towards him, which to this day, I can be honest and share with you that 
it didn't get resolved until this past April, and I am 57 years old. Mm. Yeah. I wanna... what, what happened is it ended up manifesting later on in my life um, in a not so good way. Um, but that's what happens when you don't deal with that trauma, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to talk about that a little bit um, because it is, it's funny how you have two people from similar backgrounds or sometimes even the same background, but choose two different paths because of the same reason, right? So I myself also grew up with a father who struggled with alcoholism for some time. Um, however, my dad was not uh, abusive. My dad was kind of like on the opposite side. He he would turn into like the uh, uh, what they call it, the happy drunk, I guess you would say. Uh, you know, the one that want to come hug you all the time. He come hug us and we're like, you know, I love you, right? And then he want to kiss on you stuff. Like, come on, dad. You know what I mean? So he would turn into that guy. You know, uh, <laughs> but outside of when he when he wasn't drinking, you know, he was pretty much quiet, straight to the point, you know, type of dude. You know, and so um, growing up. Even watching him, though, the struggle, because it was a struggle and it did affect him and us as his his family, you know, that he was struggling, you know, with alcoholism. But again, coming from that background made me similar like you, like, all right, I don't even want to touch it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not only just alcohol, but just drugs or any kind of, you know, leisure thing. You know, even to now, like if I do drink anything, it would probably be like a dinner wine. You know what I mean? No hard liquor, no beer, nothing like that. You know, I've never smoked anything, you know, um, but it came from from watching my dad with that struggle and being like, you know what? I don't, I don't want no parts of that. You yeah. know, I don't know. And this is what I try to get kids to understand, too, especially in this climate now with, you know, marijuana being legal in so many different spaces. And alcohol is legal at a certain age is that if you've never taken a substance, you don't know how your body is going to react to it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so that first time could be the last time you're yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? It could be the last time where you actually have control of your own thoughts and, 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 mm -hmm. and actions, you know, because of this substance. And it could be the last time that you're in control of the substance and the substance is not in control of you. You know right. what I mean? And so, um, I don't want to go too far down that lane, but you know, it's, it's a real thing, you know, it's just yeah. like, you know, seeing that example, like I said, watching my dad, the years that he did struggle with it. Uh, thank God he's, he's on the other side of it now, but just those, those early years of, of watching him struggle, just again, gave me this insight like you. Um, and just like, yeah, I'm, I don't want no parts of it. Uh, that's not the same as some of the other people in, in, in my family you know, who went the opposite way and started to drink also, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, that's why I mentioned that, you know, coming from that same background, yep. one person sees it, sees it and says, I don't want it. The other person sees it and says, I want it, you know, <laughs> we don't know why that is, you know, but that's kind of uh, what it is. But um, I want I wanted to mention that, but another thing that you mentioned mm -hmm. was what the, what the lady said to you about, uh, looking at a goal that's realistic, you know, yeah. and and I remember a friend of mine, I work in construction, so I'm a bricklayer by trade, right? right. And so um, I work in construction and a friend of mine, his family owned a junkyard. And so he grew up driving out, you know, out of big machinery, you know, the big dumpsters and all that stuff. He grew up driving those things. And so he went into the construction field as a operator. Um, he joined the operators to become an operator. And he told me his instructor pulled him to the side one day and asked him, you know, like sending a question like you were asked, you know, like, okay, why do you want to do this and things like that? And so his instructor shared with him, he's like, you know, you're one of the top students in my class. He's like, but I have to be honest with you because you're African American. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to get this position, and it's not because it has nothing to do with your ability. Because again, I know you're talented. You're the best, you know, out of this class of, of students that he had. And he was like, "But you know, I just want to give you a heads up that it's going to be a long road. You know, it's going to be a hard road just because of that. You know." And so, you know, my friend was faced with the same 
<laughs> same decision like you, like, okay, do I press through it anyway and keep going or, or do I do something else? And so just, uh, I know that that played a part even in your leadership style as becoming a leader later on uh, with not only addressing the, what can be called realistic for, for some, but then even seeing that and say, okay, that might be your uh, viewpoint of what's realistic for me, but I'm going to press for it. Not only am I going to press for it, but I'm going to help those who I would, again, begin to lead later to press for it at the same time. So how instrumental was that in your leadership style uh, of being a leader, even as you began to, to advance in your career? That was very instrumental. Um, and, and, and this is why I say that you know, I, I really didn't get healed until this year, you know, April of this year, because now I see my father totally different. Whereas I used to look at him as uh, what he did to me. Now I look at it as what he did for me. Mm -hmm. And this has come through, you know, uh, a church that I recently joined, the pastor and his, his message, uh, therapist that I am seeing uh, and a group that I belong to that's, you know, helping me do a lot of different things from building my business and just finding my purpose in life. And the three of those things coming together helped me to really, really understand that what my father did to me, it wasn't done to me, it was done for me. Mm -hmm. And so I can share some things with you also. Um, like you, I've never taken a sip of alcohol in my life. At the same time, I've never treated any employee with a lack of dignity and respect. And there were locations where I had 1,100 employees under my direction, but none of them, the, the leaders that reported to me, I would not tolerate them treating anyone in a disrespectful manner. But you see that all came because I know what it felt like to be belittled and beat down. You know what I mean? And so because that struck an accord with me at, at a young age, as I was growing up through adolescence, it made me a much better leader. Just like it gave me the power and the tools to fight back when I was challenged because you can't be a VP. Oh, yes, I can. I can prove to you. You don't know where I come from. You don't know why I'm doing this. You don't know my motivation. You don't know my drive. What gives you the right to tell me what I can and cannot accomplish? But I understand because what she was looking at on the outside was not what I was on the inside. I mm -hmm. needed to develop myself from the inside out. You know, there's a saying that says, if you look at a man as he is, he can't get any better. But if you look at a man as what he can become, he can be great. And a lot of times we look at people as what we see on the outside, as opposed to their values and their character on the inside. Because if she really got to know me, in my character, she would have been saying, oh, he's going places. Because that's essentially what happened. That's essentially what happened. So I, I have a, a question for you. So I've been on this journey uh, like the last three years of mm -hmm. myself with uh, the personal uh, development and professional development. Um, so I know how pivotal, you know, a role that that played in, in my life, you know, um, and just being in this space of, ever learning yourself, you know? And so even now as a, as a speaker, one of the things that I do when I go to schools and I'm able to speak in schools, that's one of the things that I push with students learning at a young age, you know, personal development, we're really learning who you are and, you know, your capabilities, your strengths, your weaknesses, you know, and how you develop both, you know what I mean? So when you mentioned about your journey, of uh, really that being the turning point because of who you were was not what was being reflected on the outside because of, you know, maybe your age, maybe your environment, maybe just, you know, growing up in the hip hop culture, uh, which is definitely different than <laughs> the corporate world, you know? Right. I, and it I, wasn't I, as accepted back then in the late 80s either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it definitely a, a change because, um, 
So I want to just ask, you know, even in that sense, how important do you believe, you know, that was that personal development and per and professional development was to you and your journey and how uh, pivotal do you believe that it will be to anyone that's looking to, you know, not just advance in the corporate world, but in any kind of business or things that they're going forth to do to really start diving into that personal uh, development and professional development? Excellent question. The best thing you can do is get to know yourself. Get to know how you make decisions. Uh, I mentioned this group that I'm a part of that was helping me find my, or helped me to find my pur purpose. And it identifies that your purpose is the greatest gift that you have to help others. Because when you operate in that mindset, in that, that arena, utilizing your greatest gift to help other people, that's where you get maximum fulfillment and maximum fulfillment is those individuals that you're helping coming back to you and telling you how much you helped them and telling you what you mean to them because of that because I'll, I'll share this with you working in the corporate world and moving up the chain and having the experiences of you know flying around the world to different countries building houses and driving luxury cars and all of that I can tell you even the awards that I won None of that, none of that touched my heart, touched my soul like it did some of the experiences that I've had with people that have come back to me and said, this happened because of me. That's where you get maximum fulfillment from, right? And so in finding my purpose, I learned that my purpose is derived from being uh, a rejection overcomer right? Dealing with my dad. And what it does is it made me um, excel in perseverance. Um, it made me excel at being a strategist, right? Being able to look at things, observe real quickly and figure things and pick things out and decide in the direction. And that's critical in management because the more accurate and the more fast you make a decision, the more effective you are. If you make a decision slow, but it's accurate, it's still ineffective. Mm. If you make the decision fast and it's not accurate, it's still ineffective. And I'll give you two examples, 9-11 and COVID. Now, I'm not going to get into debates with you know people, listeners out there to say whether we were fast enough or whether we were accurate in each of those situations, right? Speaking about the U.S., but there's a whole other arena. Did the World Health Organization act fast enough and accurate? Did China act fast enough and accurate? Did other countries act fast enough and accurate? Did we act fast enough and accurate, right? So the faster we make decisions, the more accurate we are, the more effective we are. I developed that skill because I was watching my father because I didn't want to make him upset, right? So you learn, you, you observe, you learn, and you pivot and you, you become really adaptable. So the three core pillars for me was perseverance, strategical, and adaptable. Now on the other side of the spectrum, it made me a people pleaser, right? Which kind of hindered me. So I would make decisions based off of not wanting to be rejected that might not have been conducive to the best interest of me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I found all of this stuff out about me just being that rejection overcomer. But then I found out that I am a truth teller. I'm a strategist. I am also a, um, a what you call a, um, a person that seek righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's a part, that's a part of my core, right? And all of these things work together. They work together on defining who I am for my purpose. So as long as I'm operating by utilizing all of those tools, that's where I get my maximum amount of fulfillment. And so I would encourage anybody to find out what their true purpose is. Because a lot of people, a lot of times when people say, well, you're not happy, we'll find your purpose, act, act in your purpose, something. But people don't know what their purpose is, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a clue. Because you would have thought what I looked like on the outside, you know, for the past, you know, 20, 30 years, Dressed professional, driving luxury cars, able to travel to other countries, 
On the outside, I was a high value man that anyone was doing. But on the inside, I was broken like you couldn't imagine. Broken like you couldn't imagine. And um, and it was all, you know, it all stemmed from my ACE, which is, you know, my adverse childhood experience. And until I dealt with that through therapy and then finding out my purpose and then uh, bringing God more into my life, um, um, had an experience with that around the same time, you know, all three of those pillars came together um, because I, I went out on this journey of starting my own business three times. And every time I got sucked back to the corporate world, I had, some, oh, we got this position available, this executive recruiter will call, and oh, we want you to take this, and I'll get lured back because of the money and the title or whatever the case may be. But my wife took me to uh, a church that we recently joined, the first church I've ever joined in my life, 57. Went to, I've, I've gone to many churches, many different denominations, always been a spiritual believer, but never joined a church. Mm -hmm. And in his first sermon, the pastor said, and it still moves me to this day, don't keep going back to what God called you out of. Because if my gift is to touch millions of people out there and to inspire them and share my stories and how I overcame certain things, I can't do that working for one company. But every single time I tried to take that jump, I would get lured back. And do you know that this past May, things are going well for my business and I've, you know, I've heard this sermon and this executive recruiter calls me up that knows me and he's like, hey, I got this chief culture officer position I think you would be perfect for. And I told my wife about it and she said, oh man, <laughs> yeah, here we go again. It's like, you know, right. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I, out of commitment to him, um, because he, I, he had gotten several jobs in the past, I said I would talk to the company. But that morning before the interview in my devotion with the Lord, I asked him to give me sight. I asked him to make me aware if this isn't from you or of you, if you are not doing this, remove it. I don't want anything to do with it. And I told my wife, I don't care if they offer me a half a million dollars a year, I'm not taking it. I go in there, it was the worst interview of my life. <laughs> not from my perspective, but from their perspective. But I, I walked away re just in joy. And you know, and since then, right, Things have been come, been going for my business really well. I think I told you that I just got it got announced yesterday that um, I was selected as a TEDx speaker for mm -hmm. TEDx Greenhouse here in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Um, so man, like the Lord is moving. I'm 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 also speaking in Madison, Wisconsin, on September the 10th at uh, District HR, which is an event, and um, and I'm a part of organizing a District HR event here in Houston working with the person that had picked up the um, investment for District HR here in Houston. And that all came about like after these things, just one after another. So it's like God said, okay, I see you. I see you, 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 you doing what I asked you to do now. You're taking those steps and you're not going back to what you don't need to go back to. Okay, so I'm gonna keep feeding you. And he's been feeding me ever since then, man. It's been so great, Ernest. I can't tell you how blessed I feel right now, mentally, spiritually, physically, all of that. And and I can I can agree with you a hundred percent. Just being on that journey, because um, like I said, over these last three years, I've been on that same journey mm -hmm. of of finding myself and and almost going through a midlife crisis. You yeah. know, at this at the same time, I'm I'm 48 now. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of going through a midlife crisis at this time, too, with the changes in and and occupation yep. and changes. And, you know, even within my family, with the kids growing up, just yep. trying to figure out, OK, who am I now? You know, yep. where do I stand? And so even going through my own uh, my own challenges uh, and looking for my own purpose, God gave me this this quote mm -hmm. and I've been using it ever since is pain births purpose. Purpose births progress, and progress is the evidence that God is at work. And so 
that he gave me that at the beginning of this journey that I am that that I'm on now, right? And so at the beginning in that time, I didn't none of this stuff that I'm doing now even existed. You know what I mean? <laughs> it existed. And so the the hardest thing that I was dealing with at that time was my divorce, coming out of a divorce. And in the midst of my divorce, what I realized was that every woman I've ever dated was a fatherless daughter. And so that led me down this path of, you know, fatherlessness. Because I, I came from a, a two-parent home. My mom and my dad was married and together until my mom passed away a couple years ago. You know, and so that's been my whole experience with living in the house with two parents. Yeah. And so once I realized this with my connection to fatherless daughters, that kind of like, OK, what does that look like? You know, for me as being a son of a father, you know, as, mm -hmm. and, and watching my father, I have five sisters, nine of us all together. So watching my father, you know, father, be a father to my sisters. And then me being a father to my own daughter. And so that started me to start the page on Instagram called Friends of Fatherless Daughters. Wow. I started that page just to kind of, you know, give my expertise or my opinion, you know, and started being asked to be on, on podcast, you know. So again, going back to the to the quote, the pain was coming out of my divorce. Um, but that helped me to realize that I have my connection with these fatherless daughters. And so I started you know, my purpose became how can I be a help to this community? And so I started with the purpose of just doing the um, the, the page on Instagram, talking about friends and fatherless daughters. And then that led to, again, me being asked to be on podcasts and then asked to start my own podcast. And then, you know, now here, a hundred and some episodes later, you know, that's the evidence that, that God is in the midst of this because the evidence is in the, the proof of of the things that's been happening since I've been on this journey, you know? And so I share that with people all the time. And I'm telling them like, look, this is what God gave me. And maybe that same thing will help you find your purpose, you know, pain, pain versus purpose. So what is, what do you hurt? You know, what are those things that not necessarily have to be a, a personal pain, but what are those, what are those pain areas that move you enough that you want to make a difference in that area? Like I said, it don't have to be your pain. Like the right. kids starving in Africa, you see those commercials all the time. We're in America, you know what I mean? So it don't have to be, I might not be the kid starving in Africa, but I may be moved enough that I want to do something about it. Mm. So what is that thing that pains you so much that you want to make a change in it? And then after you find that thing, start walking in that thing and your purpose and, and start working that things out. And if you're on the right path, then the purpose will be the the progress will be the evidence that God is with you because you will start seeing things open. You start seeing things unfold and all of those things. And so, like yourself, you know, we talked a little bit about it before we started recording. Um, that I myself was has been given the opportunity to do a TED talk. You know, coming up so and so all these things just within the last couple of years, the doors that's been opening. You know, it leads me to know that, OK, God is still in the midst of it and he's uh, walking with me on this journey. And so I just give that tidbit to anyone that's looking for their purpose. It's like God will give you the evidence. Like you said, you just act like, let me know this what you want me to do. You know, if it's not, then let me be strong enough to walk away from it. And if I'm, if I'm not strong enough to walk away, then you do something to push me away. You know what I mean? We talk, we talk a lot about those those open doors that God opened, but we also talk about the closed doors too, because sometimes they're like, I don't want you to go that way. I know it looks good. I know it got a lot of money. I know it got the fancy cars, but that's not the way I want you to go. Right. And you got to be strong enough to say, all right, God, I know you know better than I do and, and be willing to walk away. So. You know, it's interesting you talk about that. We, we have so much in common. Uh, I, the reason that I started going to therapy is because I was going through my second divorce. I'm on my third marriage now and I finally found the right one. I found my angel because God brought her to me. So when I was going through that second divorce, that year, 2015, I buried my father, got married, lost a cousin, and it was a special cousin because he was the one that helped me get through, you know, some of the talking points when my father passed. Um, same age as me, you know, um, 
lost that cousin, um, then lost another cousin. Then the wife that I had just got married to said, oh, I think we ought to go our separate ways. You know, this is after knowing this individual for 13 and a half years. And then we, you know, we got married and, and we had done a bunch of things, traveled the world together and all of that. And, um, and I, I, to this day, I still don't understand it, but it wasn't for my understanding. And that's mm -hmm. okay. It's just that where I was going, I see now where I was going, it wasn't meant for us to, to be together. And the divorce, and it, it was so much in that one year that it prompted me to say, okay, you, you got to figure out what's going on with you because you are not motivated to do anything. Your drive is, it was, it was a depressive state, like a slow kind of, not to where is, you want, you know, you're suicidal or anything like that, but you know, it's affecting you and you know what you've done in the past from an accomplishment standpoint. So it's like, well, what's going on? And then I would take, um, you know, executive jobs, but I still wasn't inspired. I wasn't motivated. I wasn't, you know, myself. And it wasn't until, um, you know, my wife uh, now, um, this year, until we got through all of that. But it was a journey because what ended up happening was I, I through therapy, I realized that I could not make the decision on choosing who my significant other, who my partner, who my equally yoked mate would be. Because after going through what I went through in a second divorce, I said, I, I broke down. You know, it's the, the saying that says, you know, when you can no longer stand, you gotta get down on your knees. And that's what I had to do. I told God, I can't drive this vehicle anymore. You gotta take the wheel. I got in the passenger seat. God stepped in behind the wheel and turned to me and he said two things. Number one, you got to get to know yourself. Number two, I want you to share this message with everyone out there. And that's, you know, part of the reason why I'm on this mission and sharing this stuff today. And, and so once I got to know myself, I figured out what I really needed. I was choosing my first two marriages. I was choosing women based off of my love language, which is physical touch. So if they were a touchy-feely, physical touch person, then, then I felt like, oh, well, they love me, right? And that comes from being that rejection overcoming. You're longing for, you know, that closeness, that connectness. But that's not what I needed mm -hmm. because of the, the character associated with my values of, you know, never having to take a sip of alcohol and being definitive and not treating anyone in a disrespectful manner in the corporate world, right? Those type of values... I needed a high level of loyalty. And I didn't get that in the first two marriages with those partners. Not to say that I was better and they weren't, just we're different, we were different. Mm -hmm. So I needed loyalty, so I figured out I needed loyalty, affection, because of my love language, transparency, and strength. Those were the four pillars. And as I'm going through, you know, the tail end of this divorce and it's, you know, coming to an end and, and uh, I wouldn't date anybody. I wouldn't date anybody, wouldn't sleep with anybody, wouldn't do any, any of that. I wasn't going to let anyone close to my heart until I saw those four pillars. And check this out. This is how good God works. I'm living in Atlanta. My wife today lives in Houston. That's what brought me to Houston. We go to a conference all the way out in San Diego. There's about 1,100 people at this conference, you know, for entrepreneurs and speakers. We meet, but I meet hundreds of people. We don't speak for four months, Ernest, four months. But we exchanged information because we talked, we had like a two minute conversation, which, were, which is what I had with just a lot of people there. Right? She saw me post something on social media about management four months later. And she commented and was like, hey, you know, where were you 10 years ago? I could have used this 10 years ago. And so we ended up having a conversation about it over the phone. Four months later, He's steady having these conversations over the phone. But what I saw in that four months over the phone, because I'm in Atlanta, she's in Houston, right? I vaguely even remember how she looked. But I remember knowing that the loyalty was higher than I'd ever seen. Couldn't see the affection because we, we're apart physically, right? 
This is going on like nine months before I, you know, last time I saw her. But I saw the strength and I saw this transparency. And so that was God's way of basically saying, okay, now that you know you, you know what you need, now I'm gonna bring her to you. And he brought her to me. And um, to this day, I'll never forget. Uh, she's saying to me, uh, hey, um, I want to come to Atlanta and visit you. And I said, well, I think I should come to Houston first, you know, trying to the manly thing, right? I don't want you to have to pay. Let me pay to come and see you. And she said, no, I need to come to Atlanta. And I, then I figured it out. You know, she wanted to see if I was living like I said I was, mm -hmm. right? All these four months we've been talking on the phone, right? And so... <laughs> She booked a hotel up the street from the from our development, and uh, she came to Atlanta. And I'll never forget, you know, in Atlanta, you have to come up these escalators, you know, at the airport. And I'm standing there, and she comes up the escalators, and I see her, and then I remember her face, and it was like the most beautiful thing. And um, and I asked her right then, and I said, "Hey, I'm thinking about going to China. You want to go to China with me?" And she said, "Yes." I expected to say yes. So a couple months later, we're in China. And I'll tell you this, when you get on a 10 and a half hour flight and it seems like 10 <laughs> minutes, you know that's the one, right? You yeah, know yeah. One. And so that's what kind of brought us together, man. It was a man upstairs, but it was me having to humble myself and, and basically turn it over to God and, and let him decide what type of woman that was best for me, right? And, and it's, it, you know, the relationship has been beautiful because as I've gone through these challenges now with my father, Guess who had my back, man? Guess who supported me? Guess who helped me up when I was going through it? It was her. It was her. You know? And now, you know, we're just so such of a beautiful place. You know, we just got back from a double vacation. You know, we went to Cancun for a week and stayed on the resort with some friends. It was their anniversary. And then uh, flew back and I flew up to Buffalo, did a speaking event. Uh, at a woman's conference, Women on Fire. And um, beautiful, I love doing those because that's where I get fulfillment, right? Sharing a message with people. And um, then immediately after that, we flew out to LA and took a cruise from Long Beach down to Cabo. And we just got back a couple of days ago. And like it, life has just been so beautiful um, since knowing myself and knowing this journey and seeing uh, the path that God has me on. Yeah. yeah, man, it, it's. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to your story. So, I, I again, we do have a, a lot of things in common. Um, I've been divorced twice, right? Oh. And coming out of that, uh, coming out of my second divorce is when I had this uh, um, turning point where I am now of of getting uh -huh. to know myself and things like that, and going through some of the same things that you went through as far as as far as mate wise and looking at okay and and that's even how i got to the point where i recognized that everyone that i've ever dated was a father's daughter because yeah, i started that's, looking that's, at that yeah. i started looking at that um but also in my my second marriage that same year that i got married my mom passed so I lost a parent and got married that same year. Like wow. <laughs> we did. So there's a lot of little things in common. So uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, did it the third time, but I, I am looking forward to it. Uh, I definitely, I think I'm going through a period of of, of rebuilding, you know, and a period of, of learning myself. And and I want, I just want to say this for the listeners, because sometimes, um, sometimes your growth has nothing to do with the other person, you know. Right. So right. my my ex wife, uh, who's very still great friends with me to this day, mm -hmm. we grew up together. So we've known each other our whole life. You know, um, we were each other's first boyfriend and girlfriend when we was like 12, 13 years old. So that's how how far back we go. And so, you know, I get the question sometimes with the things that I'm doing now, the things that has transpired in those three four years since we've been divorced, it's like, okay, you got the podcast, you're speaking, you know, you got this other business and things that you started, you know, why didn't you do all that while you were married? And I said, well, because when I was married, none of this stuff existed. 
You know what I mean? When I was married, I never would have thought about the fact that I'm attracted to fatherless daughters because I was married. It was like, why would I even think that? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so the thing that transpired after my after my divorce, my divorce had to happen for me to be here. Yes. You know I mean? yes. Like the things that I've that I've accomplished to this point is a result of my divorce. It's not yes. the reason for my divorce. Is I just believe that God had a plan that he wanted me to carry out. And that just happened to be the ignition switch that I needed to become on this journey. And so it has nothing to do with the other person. And so sometimes, you know, people may look at you uh, after you are divorced and say, well, you've done this or they've done that. And it's like, why you didn't do it earlier? Or like in some cases, like maybe you were holding out and not giving your all while you were with this person or something like, you know, to that ex example. But I just wanted to just to be known that sometimes is is that just might be the ignition switch to turn whatever on that needs to be turned on in your mind to make you go to that next level in your life. And it really has nothing to do with the other person. Right. It's, the event itself was the thing that says, okay, now it's time to go. You know, and so I just like to mention that because there are some people who know us because we're still friends. You know, we're still great friends. Like I said, we've been knowing each other our whole life. And that was one of our uh, things that's coming out of our divorce that we were really adamant about is we didn't want to lose our friendship along mm -hmm. with marriage. because We've been friends longer than we've been married. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that was important to us. Um, and so there are some people that know us that have known us our whole lives and they ask that question like well why are you doing all of this great stuff now and you didn't do it you know not that my marriage wasn't great and we didn't right. do things but the things that i'm doing now i wasn't even i didn't even know what a podcast was <laughs> four years ago, you know what I mean? and so i'm just like hey i i can't tell you why you know but that was the thing that led me on this journey and i think that's just you know how god planned it and and sometimes we are sometimes our losses is the beginning of our wins. You know what I mean? And we just don't see it when we're too focused on the loss itself. So anyway, I get off my soapbox. It's okay. It's okay, man. Preach, man. I love it. It reminds me of, of um, I'm a I'm a big uh, uh, comic book uh, uh, Marvel DC fan, and it reminds me of the kind of like the X Men that have special powers. But when they're younger, they haven't manifested yet. And so, you know, they go through, might go through a strenuous situation or something like that. And they transform, right? And so what you went through, it transformed you into what you are today. And I can say the same thing for me. You know, those things, they, they it's painful, but it transformed you into, you know, what you are today. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So we're going to get ready to get out of here, Rodney. But before we go, uh, I know you are an author. So I wanted to give you a minute to be able to talk a little bit about the book and, and what it's about and where people can find it. Well, my book is Broken, Inspired, and Driven. And in that book, you've got um, uh, a, a couple of critical things. You've got emotional stories that transpired in my life that broke me. And those same things, and I talked about a few of them earlier, those same things inspired me and gave me that drive to be successful. So the book is, is, is uh, a combination of historical events that happened in my life, coupled with some management uh, philosophies on what made me successful and how I utilize those things to make me even more successful and climbing the corporate world at so such of an early age and at so such of a fast pace. So that's what the book is about. For individuals that want to um, connect with me, you want to be a part of my community, uh, I have this, this, this concept that I'm developing on what I call magnetic leadership. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, kind of pushing now, magnetic leadership. It's where you build uh, loyalty with your employees and your colleagues from a leadership standpoint. So for the individuals that want to reach out to me, you want to connect with me, be a part of my community, just text the word magnetic, M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C, magnetic to 33777. 
So if you text the word magnetic, M E, I'm sorry, M A G N E T I C to 33777, then you can join a part of my network and um, we can connect and all of that. And I do one on one coaching, I do workshops, um, keynote speaking, et cetera. All right, all right. Man, so <laughs> this has been a long, a, a great conversation. I was going to say a long conversation. Yes. Not a long conversation, but definitely uh, a great conversation. And I uh, can't wait to, number one, stay in contact with you and to have you on the, the Girl Dead Discussions podcast. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but I want you I want you to have the last word. I want you to leave us with a word of uh, inspiration or advice, however you, however you feel. Um, and so I'll give you a couple of seconds uh, to think about that. To my listeners, thank you guys uh, for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you guys have thought about starting your own podcast, because you listen to this podcast, but if you have ever thought about starting your own podcast, I want you guys to get your copy of the Start Your Podcast Now ebook. Uh, which I wrote. People kept asking me, how do I start a podcast? You know, what do I need to do? And so I made it very simple for myself and simple for you guys to get uh, your hands on it. Again, it's Start Your Podcast Now ebook. You can find it at ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com. You can find the ebook there. And, and it's so effective that I've even turned it into a after school program that I've been going to schools, high schools and middle schools, teaching students how to start their own podcast using this uh, ebook that I wrote. So again, if you ever started start, starting your own podcast, go to ebooksbyejames.com in order to get your copy of uh, Start Your Podcast Now ebook. Also, make sure you guys check out my website at dealhealfulfill.org. Uh, that is my main website, which you can go and find out more things about myself and what I have going on uh, and how to support me in my mission, which is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. That's what I'm all about. Uh, and I do that through various ways. But make sure you guys go there. And especially if you want me to come out to be a speaker, on your at your organization or your school or even to uh, head a workshop go to dealhealfulfill.org in order to have me come out and um uh you can book me there at that website all right and uh also at ebooksbyejames.com not only can you get the uh ebook to start your podcast but you can get my other ebooks that I have available, including uh, Forgiving Me, The Four Steps to Self Forgiveness, uh, ebook called From Males to Men, which is a male mentoring ebook for young boys, and also uh, the four core, the core four, which is the core four values that every daughter should get from her father. Uh, that ebook we actually use as part of the programming for the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. So you guys can get those ebooks as well as the ebook for the Start Your Podcast at ebooksbyejames.com. Make sure you guys check that out as well as make sure you guys check out our Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That is our tagline. Not only can you get inspirational teas at our website, but you can get, kind, uh, you can get teas with our podcast logos on it. So we got uh, T-shirts where our podcast logo for the Deal to Heal podcast, as well as the Girl Dead, Dis uh, the Girl Dead Discussions podcast and also our other um, inspirational tees. So make sure you guys go deal, the number two, healtees.com, deal to healtees.com in order to check out our inspirational T-shirt line. Last but not least, over the last couple of years, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And what we do, we have free virtual workshops every other month. We used to have them every quarter, but now we're doing it every other month. We have a free virtual workshop talking about forgiveness, what it is, what it's not, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others. You know, what does it mean to forgive? How do you forgive yourself? So just really dealing with everything, uh, pertaining to forgiveness. And I think this is very important. Um, that's why I became part of the of the mission. But you guys can go to forgivenessmission.com in order to register for the next, next 
free virtual event. So whenever you're listening to this, either one just uh, ended or one is coming up. So you can go to forgivenessmission.com in order to register, or you can go to Eventbrite and look up the Forgiveness Workshop headed by the Forgiveness Mission, and you guys can find uh, be able to register for the event there. Again, that's the forgivenessmission.com. Um, uh, which I've been a part of the last couple of years. It's an amazing project, uh, and that's why I support it. So that being said, Mr. Rodney, uh, I definitely appreciate you being on. Definitely appreciate you sharing your expertise and your story. We have so much in common. <laughs> yes. But I want you to have the last words. I want you to give us... Um, you know, a word of advice, word of inspiration, however you feel, and definitely leave your social media... Uh, information or business information where those who want to follow you and keep in contact with you where they can find you. So that being said, the floor is yours. Okay. Last word. I will say this. Um, when I had to develop myself, there were two things that I felt like you need to be successful. One, you have to have a burning desire for whatever it is you want. And two, you have to make sure that you keep an open mind to develop yourself. Now, let me just elaborate a little bit on those two. The burning desire is critical because two things are paramount. You're going to go through them. It's a part of life. And that is number one, people, and number two, circumstances. People and circumstances will sway you away from that goal. That's why you have to have a burning desire. And then the second part of that is just keep an open mind so that you continue to develop yourself. You want to get better, you want to refine your skills, you want to move into a position, um, you want to work someplace else, whatever it is you want to do, continue to develop yourself and have a burning desire for it, and you will accomplish that. As far as my social media handles, I'm on uh, uh, um, Facebook at uh, Rodney Lawson, I have a business page, Rodney Lawson LLC. My Instagram handle is Rodney Law 12 and um, and I'm also on uh, TikTok and Twitter and all that, Rodney Law 12 or Rodney Lawson LLC. Those are the places that you can find me. And I'm on LinkedIn also as well under Rodney Lawson. That's where most of my clients go. So. All right. All right. So that ended no better than that. To my listeners, thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, where our mission is to help people to deal heal and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain and to fulfill your purpose. Until next time, you guys be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to deals to heal teas.myshopify.com. Remember, our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for listening.